ECSA. Tell us about ECSA and please officially introduce yourself um, for the record. Okay, thank you. My name is Sipo Matonsela. I'm the CEO, Chief Executive Officer of the Engineering Council of South Africa. It's the body that regulates the engineering profession in this country. In a trying time um, where the water scarcity is a serious problem, there are many innovations that are out there, and certainly one where they convert seawater into, um, into drinkable water, clean drinkable water. Um, tell us about that process and its view or, or its play um, from the engineering perspective of it. Well, I've visited some of the stands here to watch on what is on offering by various companies. One that took my mind out was the reverse osmosis process that I spoke about where they push in contaminated water or seawater against a membrane and you get a pure H2O type of water at the end of the process. But there are many other processes that are being used to clear water from all contamination so that it can be used by human beings. Our role though as the Engineering Council of South Africa is to make sure that those who practice the engineering profession do that kind of work against any potential damage that can happen to the environment as well as to those people who consume those uh, water products that are, uh, are offered here today. If South Africa is going through the, 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 the process of um, converting seawater into drinkable water uh, to eradicate the problem, do you think we have enough skilled engineers in this country to be able to, um, to perform the magic? Yes, I think we do. The technology is well available now throughout the world and here in South Africa more in, most in particular. But it's an expensive uh, system. We would still be better off relying on the natural water that flows from our mountains rather than converting water that's from the ocean because that costs quite a lot of money for us to, to do. I hope that you're going to get enough rainfall and avoid going through the sanitation processes. And secondly, the other important point is that what the conference is all about. Try to clean up as much of the water that we've already used, the so-called waste water. Bring it back into the system. That is less costly than desalinating water from the sea. And um, speak to us about um, engineering still has that view from the eyes of a local person or a black person that it's very much a white profession, a preferred profession. It has this, this kind of, uh, of a view about it. Um, what is the percentage of black South Africans that are um, subscribing to the profession or, or that are professionals or studying? Has there been an increase in the last couple of years? Um, speak to us about that. Yes, there has been a steady increase. You will recall that we come from a legacy in South Africa where black people were prohibited from learning and studying engineering as a profession of their choice for practical purposes. But since the 1980s, there have been a gradual growth of engineers, black engineers in particular, who are registered by EXA. As we speak right now, we've got about 10, 12,000 of black engineers registered against the total pool of 50,000 engineers in this country. And the, the rate of registration of young blacks is much higher. So we hope that we're going to get an equitable line of registered engineers in this country in not too far distant from the future. And women? Uh, women is still low. Women has still been perceived as a male environment, but they are there. But the figures are a bit discouraging, so let's not go into that area for now until we've got a, a decent figure to talk about. Good. So lastly, what is the future of ECSA? Bright, very, very bright. More and more people are coming to us and they see us as the champions of the engineering profession and they see that everyone who is accredited or registered with us is viewed in a very high esteem out there in the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.